Hi, this is Brandon from Watches on You. Today, I want to talk about a brand that I have been thoroughly impressed with lately and which I think is making big moves in the watch industry. And that is, of course, Breitling. But before I do that, I want to make you aware of a promotion I have going on for a watch that I personally designed, and that is the Hoagland & Sons Mark I Mecha Quartz Chronograph. So for those of you who are unfamiliar with this story, I ran a Kickstarter campaign last year with the intention of creating my own watch, the Hoagland & Sons Mark I Chronograph, and basically I wanted to create a affordable chronograph which looked and felt like a mechanical watch at, again, an affordable price. So basically this uses a Seiko VK64 Mecha Quartz movement, which lets it have a second hand that smoothly runs around the dial like a normal automatic chronograph because it has a mechanical chronograph module and then a quartz oscillator. So it's still as accurate as a quartz watch, but it feels mechanical because it even um, flicks back to 12 o'clock when you reset the watch. So um, basically the promotion I have going on is that uh, I will give $10, um, a $10 discount to anyone who is willing to post a, the listing I have for this watch on a watch blog. So all you have to do is offer me $10 less than the price, which is $124.50. That's actually a 50% discount already from the retail price. Um, I really just wanna get my eBay listing rolling. Uh, I, was, I recently started a new listing once I got a bunch of inventory um, last week. So. Uh, basically, I want to run this promotion, and this goes for anyone who sees your post as well. So as long as they send me a link uh, to their post on a watch blog, then they'll get a ten percent, uh, ten sorry, ten dollar discount as well. Um, so definitely take advan advantage of that. I'll leave a link to the listing in the description. Um, so definitely check that out. But now moving on to the main content of this video, and that is uh, Breitling's new watches. Now I wanted to do kind of an overview video of these watches before I get to see them individually. I'll be publishing individual reviews of these watches probably within the next two weeks or so. Um, it's been a bit of a challenge to get into the jewelers um, in the COVID-19 season just for, uh, for filming and uh, they wanna keep their clients safe and all that, which I totally understand. Um, but we have approval to go to the Breitling dealer, Continental Diamond um, within the next few weeks here. So. Um, I'll just be giving kind of a broad overview of many of their new models, which I'm very excited about. So for uh, the first new model um, that I'm really excited about is their new AVI 1953 reference 765 reissue. Now this watch is very similar to the um, Breguet Type 20 that I had, but obviously it's based on a Breitling model that was released in 1953. But again, it's a pilot to watch. Um, I'm super, uh, I'm a big fan of the look of this watch. I think it actually looks better than the Bre uh, Breguet Type 20 because it has a bit of a thinner bezel and um, the Breguet Type 20 has kind of a thick bezel uh, and I don't, it kind of takes up the dial space, but you get this beautiful, you can see the beautiful like dome crystal on this watch. I'm really excited to see this one in person. Um, and it's available in a bunch of different metals as well. So I'm kind of excited to see uh, which ones people decide to buy. So the base model has a manufacturer movement. They all have manufacturer movement uh, with a 70 hour power reserve. But um, the base model is $8,600, which I feel is a pretty reasonable price for the fact that it's just this well made of a watch. I think it's absolutely beautiful. And again, you're getting the manufacturer movement with that 70 hour power reserve. That's way above the 48 hour power reserve that I like to see in watches. Um, but again, the steel version is $8,600. There's a rose gold version for $22,850. And then there's a platinum version for $39,900. The, the platinum one I think is going to be a bit rare considering it's almost double the price of the rose gold version, but um, it looks fantastic. Um, I'll be putting images up on the side here of all the different versions. Um, but um, I'm really excited to see people wearing this watch. I'm really excited to review the watch as well. Uh, so moving on to the next one, and this is kind of a controversial watch. It's the Super Ocean Heritage 57. So this one is, um, again, hearkening back to some of their previous models. Breitling's been doing this a lot lately. Um, 
and trying to get more into the vintage kind of market, uh, which I really like. They're kind of they're kind of moving away from their super big watches, but as you'll see, they have actually added some of those as well. Um, but I'm excited for them to get into the market where it's just smaller, kind of classic looking watches. Um, and this Super Ocean Heritage is no exception, so it's forty three hundred eighty dollars. But it has a like in inverted bezel. It's a concave bezel, I would say. Um, and I actually did see this one in person, and it's actually pretty interesting. The bezel itself doesn't click. It's just very. It, it's very tight um, when you turn it, but it doesn't really make a. It doesn't make a sound. It's just perfectly smooth. It's a really interesting feeling. It feels kind of like old Submariners that didn't have a clicking bezel, but it's a lot tighter than that, um, which makes it feel very high quality. Um, so I'm excited to see people buy that one. And then they have a nice uh, limited edition where, with kind of a rainbow dial. They wanted to obviously kind of cash in on some of the uh, rainbow um, trend that you saw with the Rolex Daytona. Um, and uh, I definitely, I'm excited to see people wear that. I, d I don't know how popular it'll be. It probably will be if it's anything like the Daytona. Um, but another watch that they released um, is that you don't really see a lot about. And this is the new Super Ocean Automatic 48. So obviously this is a 48 millimeter watch. It is huge, like old Breitlings. But it's huge in a way that, and I saw this in person, it's not like that distracting. It's meant to look like a really tough watch because you have this bezel lock on the side, kind of like a plow prof that it's like a, but it's a, it's more of a switch instead of a button. Um, and if you pull that back, it'll uh, allow you to rotate the bezel. Uh, one kind of downside of this watch is that it only has a 300 meter water resistance, which obviously is more than you'd ever need for diving. But, um, it, to me, for a watch that's that big and that kind of tough and utilitarian looking, I think it should have a higher water resistance, especially considering that Breitling has a history of making watches with water resistances over a thousand meters. So I don't know how much extra effort they would have had to put in to increase that water resistance, given their history, again, with making watches that have a significant water resistance. Another watch that I am super excited about is the Top Time. I saw this in person, it's just as beautiful as it looks online. Um, and this is one of the kind of types of watches that inspired me when I was creating my own uh, kind of vintage racing chronograph. That's the Hoagland and Sons Mark I. Um, and I'm super excited to see that Breitling made this watch. I kind of, I would really speculate that these watches, especially the vintage ones, are gonna go up in value significantly in the future. Um, just because they're so classic looking. Um, and I, and I, I, I don't want to make an investment prediction for uh, the new one, but I would say that the, the older ones are going to get more valuable in the future, definitely. But this one comes with a very unique Zorro dial. I didn't know how I felt about this originally, but then seeing it in person, it's a lot more um, impressive. And it's really unique because, I mean, there are a lot of vintage style looking chronographs, and there's really none that look like this. Uh, and it's not that distracting. Um, it looked kind of wild when I saw it first online, so I was kind of nervous about how it would look in person, but um, it definitely looks classic and it's not too um, out there. But the one downside of this watch is that it has an ETA-based movement. It does have a 48-hour power reserve though, so that kind of compensates. Sometimes you'll see ETA-based movements that have less than that, and that is kind of a downside for me. But uh, this one is COSC. Uh, it's a COSC certified chronometer and it has a 48 hour power reserve, so I can't really complain there. Um, so another watch, and this one was probably the most popular of all the new Breitling releases, was of course the Chronomat, and that's because of the new bracelet. And this is another watch that I saw in person and will definitely do, be doing a review of again in the next few weeks. Um, and it comes with that really unique bracelet that, and I was very nervous about this. Honestly, it doesn't look that great online. But if you see it in person, you can tell that the bracelet is extremely well made. It's extremely thick, um, not really intrusively thick because again, it can articulate a lot more than a normal, um, like an oyster bracelet or something like that, just due to the fact that there are so many more links. But it actually looks very, very nice in person. And I, I was kind of surprised. I thought I wouldn't like it at all, but um, frankly, I thought it'd be, it, 
it would be extremely comfortable if you're wearing it just because again you can articulate all those links around your wrists a lot better than watches that have kind of wider uh, and fewer links. Um, and again, that one starts at $8,100, but it does come with the B01 in-house movement. So uh, you're getting more value from the movement there. And also this watch um, might go down to be a classic in history because it really doesn't look like anything else Breitling's made or another manufacturer is currently making. So I'm excited to see um, what people think about this. And I haven't seen too much about it past their original release, so I'm kind of excited for that to them to get into the marketplace and see where what people think about it. So the recent release in the past few weeks here is the Endurance Pro. Now this is kind of building off of their uh, former Brightlight uh, composite made watches uh, with the super the um, thermal compensated quartz movements. It's a thermal compensated chronograph. It comes in a variety of super cool colors. They're kind of going after the athlete market. Um, they're around $3,000 retail, which is obviously very expensive for a quartz watch. But um, really, I think they look very cool. And I think Breitling is gonna have more kind of brand appeal going forward. So um, whether or not that's good value is kind of up to you. But if you can get a discount on it, I think that it could be reasonable value. And obviously it's a Breitling, so it's made um, with uh, exceptional quality. One big downside for me is that it only has a hundred meter water resistance. I think they definitely could have gotten more uh, more out of it, especially just given that it's $3,000. I mean, how much more can it cost to put a few extra gaskets in to kind of bump it up to 200 or 300 meters? Um, I, yeah, I don't know why they chose to do that, but I wish it was greater uh, in the water resistance. So kind of going overall, I think that these new releases show that Breitling is trying to try a bunch of new strategies to acquire new customers. And I think that for all the luxury watch brands, they probably have the most variety overall in their pieces. The only other brand that I can think of that comes close would be probably Omega, maybe Tag Heuer, but I would say Omega probably has greater variety than Tag Heuer, definitely. Um, but I think that um, given that they have watches like the Emergency, they're just, um, they have everything really from the Emergency to some of their dressier models. I think that they have a, a ton of variety. I think their brand's definitely gonna be a lot more popular than it is in the future. And I'm a little bit surprised that it isn't um, quite as popular as say Omega in the uh, watch review game and things like that. Um, so I'm excited to see where it goes and I think it'll definitely grow. Um, their leadership, again, is really trying to try a bunch of new strategies and uh, try to release a bunch of new models, all of which are of exceptional quality, at least the ones that I've seen. Um, so again, I'm really excited about it. If you like this video, remember to like, subscribe, and share. And again, check out that promotion we have for my watch. I'm really trying to kind of do an experiment to see if I can build a large social media kind of influence on that watch as far as watch blogs go. I've tried a little bit with Facebook ads and they haven't really worked out, but um, kind of getting feedback from the community and uh, having people express their opinions on my watch is helpful not only to me, but other people who want to purchase it. So if you really want to help me out and help the channel out, I would definitely suggest you promote uh, that watch. But again, it's totally up to you. Um, again, I just want to build the best watch as possible and get them into as many hands as possible. So uh, thank you for watching. Remember to like, subscribe, and share. Thanks again.